Hi and welcome back to the AHF. Today I'm going to be doing a book review on the book of the Buckler by Herbert Schmidt. Um, I think this is probably the first of its kind actually. I've seen a few sort of pamphlets and that kind of thing on bucklers and this is very much a, a reference work or um, also a typology sort of uh, book on the subject of bucklers. There have been quite a few books on sort of typology and reference work to swords and other sort of weapons but yeah the buckler is a real rarity. Now First of all, why is that important? Well, in HEMA, the buckler is really commonly practiced because people love the 133 manuscript, they love the Bolognese of the 16th century Italian stuff. The buckler has um, a really big following. However, what we've not really seen much of is a lot of reference work looking at the original bucklers as to what do they exactly look like, what do they weigh, how do they handle, how were they carried, um, what sort of shape are the handles on the backs of them. So. It's quite a few questions that um, often aren't answered particularly well. And one of the problems with looking at uh, bucklers is there really aren't that many surviving examples. Uh, when you consider how common they really were, and they were very common for many hundreds of years, there are very, very few surviving examples. So if you look at most museums, they've only got one or two usually. Um, some of the bigger museums have even only got a small handful when you look at the sort of hundreds or thousands of swords they've got. So the bucklers are quite rare. And it's not really surprising because most of them are quite sort of utilitarian and like sort of utilitarian weapons like sort of falchions they just get thrown out over time because they're just a, a tool um, and as, as ever museums also like to display the most elaborate and most sort of uh, decorative and well shiny things they've got so yeah the buckler again it's quite utilitarian it doesn't really get that much credit you don't see many of them left it's really quite a hard subject to you know look at and say okay these are the surviving examples and these are the dimension, this is the weight. It's, it's quite hard to get that kind of info. So it was nice to see this book released. I'm just going to do a quick overview. Uh, first of all, the it's a nice size. Um, I was quite surprised that it was all colour. I'll be honest, I didn't really look too much into it before buying it because it looked like a good reference work, so I just bought it anyway and uh, judged it when it actually turned up. So yeah, it's all colour, which is quite surprising. Um, not sort of a few plates, but realistically, every single sort of page in it is, is colour whether there are actual photos. That's really quite nice because not just to actually look at the pictures of the bucklers themselves but there's also a lot of original artwork from manuscripts and sort of uh, fact book um, and different fighting treaties that show through different periods, the medieval and renaissance era, how the bucklers were actually used and how they were being carried and things like that. So the colour artwork is really really nice. So being in colour, really really good um, uh, attribute for this book. The price on it was £30, which I think is sort of bog standard for um, for these kind of reference books, particularly when they're in colour. They can often go a bit, go a bit more um, sort of pricey, so 30 quid is actually really quite good. Uh, looking at it um, overall, well with this kind of book, first thing is, what are the pictures like? It may sound silly, but it's really, really important when you've got a reference book like this, whatever it's about, whether it's armour, swords, bucklers, <clears throat> what are the actual photos like? And by that I mean how large are they, how clear are they? Because you get a lot of books, particularly from the 60s and the 70s, <clears throat> that are just faded out. They look like photocopies that are just awful and they're just terrible resolution. Well, I'm glad to say that that's not what this book is. This is um, really, really high quality photographs, really high resolution, very, very clear. Um, with really nice uh, close-ups of sort of detail on the bucklers. So, as far as the pictures go, as nice pictures to look at, as art if you like, as well as <clears throat> really fine detail to really pick out the, the little elements, excellent. And one of the things you tend to find in a lot of books like this as well, is you'll get one photo of a weapon only from one angle, and that is infuriating. Because, particularly the buckler, you look at a picture of a buckler and you're thinking, Okay, I've seen it from the front. That gives me a reasonably good sort of inclination as to what kind of uh, style it is. But what's the depth like? What's the shape like? What's the grip on the back like? <clears throat> and those are really important factors. So this book has lots of pictures of most of the weapons in it, most of the bucklers that are in it. And you get to see everything from all different angles, which I absolutely love. So yeah, it seems trivial that how many sort of nice colour pictures do you have. But actually when it comes to reference work typology, it's really, really important. So, <clears throat> big plus point. Uh, the next thing is um, my other bugbear of uh, typology and reference manuals. 
and this drives me nuts when I get a book on, say, medieval swordsmanship. You think even Oakshot, for example, which is Oakshot's work is fantastic, but you look at most of what he put in, put into print, and you're looking through and seeing these sort of uh, nice sort of swords that he's put sort of typology and uh, and, and sort of um, uh, and references for, and yet there's no length, there's no sort of dimensions, there's no weights and balances, and all those things which are so so important. So with this, you actually flick to um, a uh, buckler so this is a nice sort of the square target sort of wave shaped buckler and you look through and there's the rough sort of date origin weight uh, we got all kinds of bits about material length of the grip diameter of the grip um, support for the thumb we've got thicknesses at all different points as well as um, uh, basically how deep the sort of waves of the buckler are and all kinds of information all the stuff that you really want to know if you want to actually look at it in in-depth detail so that was really nice because that really annoys me. Yeah, there's so many books. Same with ABP Norman's uh, Rapier and Small Sword, which is the number one reference book for Rapier and Small Sword. Again, you're looking at sort of just hilts and nothing about weights, balances, dimensions. What's the actual weapon like as a whole? This book does exactly that. Covers it all the detail so you can tell exactly what you're looking at. And you can actually get a sense of how the item's going to feel and handle because you've actually looked at the dimensions are going to have a good sort of clear idea. So that's really, really nice. The next thing is, obviously this is going to stand as a reference work to the bucklers themselves, but there's also a lot to be said about context, and that is who used them, when, why, and how, and all of that is also in there, which is nicely covered. I'm glad to see that. It goes, her book, uh, in this book goes into detail on the kind of people that were carrying them, and why they were carrying them, he talks about them sort of being carried by sort of uh, people in war, students, uh, people in civilian life in duels, and duels, and also the different weapons that were also used with the bucklers. So that sort of context or contextual information is in there as well, which is nice to see, and also going back to antiquity, so you get all the classical stuff as well. So in terms of looking at the history of the buckler, there's a nice amount in there without it going a little too heavy. Um, I think there's a nice amount of information in it and a lot of um, original sort of artwork as, as well that you can look at. Um, I really do like the way that's being done. The nice next nice thing which I really did appreciate is when you go to the back of the book, there's the buckler comparison chart, which is quite a few pages long and just has nice little thumbnail image of the buckler and then um, the diameter, the date, the weight, uh, nicely sort of concise so you can actually flick through and again get some idea of averages and comparisons of different types of bucklers so that's really useful that kind of information is actually unusual in books on swords which actually should be very very common so that kind of comparative information is really really nice um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to say about oh of course um, typology when you look to books like um, Oakshot's Records of the Medieval Sword or to again Norman's Rapian Small Sword they create a classification system for the swords. So, you know, type one, two, three, four, five, and you get A's and B's and all that kind of thing. So it's, it's a clear, concise um, typology of the swords that they're covering. And in this book, there is a typology system for the different kinds of bucklers, which is nice because you do get different shapes and sizes and um, quite a bit of variety, more than you would think, sort of concave and convex and wave and, and all sorts. So, there's a nice simple system of um, giving a typology to the bucklers, which is quite helpful actually. So that works really, really well. And what else? Well, of course, yeah, the derivatives. Um, with bucklers, you're going to see, I talked about this in other videos, all kinds of derivatives of bucklers that have sort of spikes and hooks and, and blades even. Um, and that's also talked about in some of the more unusual bits. So that's covered in some really nice detail. I mean, for me, what was so amazing about this is just having the reference. It's just, uh, the, these are kind of a good selection of original bucklers. These are the weights and the um, metal thicknesses and the diameters and the grip shape. That's the kind of really, really useful information that I wanted. So the extra bonus stuff, the contextual stuff, I think is excellent if you aren't so familiar with bucklers. Um, but for me, as a reference work, it was fantastic. So whether you're just getting into Buckler as a beginner, or 
you train with bucklers all the time. Actually, it's a really good reference book for people like me, and it's a really good introduction to bucklers and the history of bucklers for those of you just getting started. So, is there anything I dislike about this book? I have only flicked through so far because, again, I have bought it very much as that reference, just the sort of hard figures. So I haven't read every single block of text yet, but I have given this a good go-over, a reasonable go-over. And no, actually, can't find fault with it yet. Um, it's exactly what I was after. So yeah, as a reference work and as a good sort of overview of the history of the buckler and its use. Uh, oh, there's one thing I also forgot to mention is there's a good bit about how they were worn or carried. And this is kind of a question we get all the time is how were bucklers carried? And there's actually a nice bit of um, sort of introduction into or overview of how the different methods or how they were carried in different methods throughout different time periods as well. And I think that's probably all I wanted to say about it. Yeah. And um, also I suppose the distinction made between what is a buckler and what's a shield. Well, I'll leave that to the reader to read for themselves, but I think Herbert's um, a sort of uh, classification of that, I think it's pretty sound. So yeah, I would say excellent book. I would definitely recommend it. If you're into HEMA or you're into the history of these weapons, get this book. It is actually really, really good. And um, I don't think I've seen anything else quite like it. So if you want a reference book on bucklers, I think it's probably the only one you're going to have. So just as well, it's good. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.